Hey, thanks so much for listening to the Ridge Community Church Podcast. My name is John. I'm one of the pastors on staff at the Ridge, and our vision is to bring the hope of Jesus into every home. So as a piece of that, our goal each week is to bring you something that's hopeful and helpful. So subscribe to this podcast to make sure you don't miss any hopeful and helpful conversations. Hey, everyone, and thanks for listening to this episode of the Ridge Community Church Podcast. If you find today's episode hopeful and helpful, then please follow or subscribe and then rate and review so that more people can find the conversation. As a church, we're in the middle of something that we call Live Big, which is our annual season to practice generosity and compassion in a big way, and it's a time where we really highlight our church partners. We select our partners because they live out what we see as our unique call to compassion, serving kids, alleviating cycles of poverty, and planting churches. This week, we're highlighting our local partner, CareNet. CareNet is a crisis pregnancy center in Milwaukee that offers a range of services from ultrasounds, pregnancy counseling, post-abortion counseling, classes, and lots of other resources to care for women and their child holistically. Nate and I got to chat with the executive director of CareNet, Rachel Shep, and she shares with us more about CareNet, some stories of women who have been impacted by CareNet, and what she's learned over her time there, and lots more. This is our conversation with Rachel. Hi, Rachel. Thanks for coming on the podcast and chatting with Nate and I. Yeah, thanks for having me. Looking forward to the conversation. Before, so As we just get started, would you mind just sharing a little bit about CareNet and what you do there? So CareNet's uh, mission is to share the love of Christ with women that are facing an unexpected pregnancy. And the main ways that we do that are just by offering some very practical services to women. So we give out free and provide free pregnancy testing free ultrasounds and options counseling to women who come to us and are unsure if they want to continue their pregnancy. We also offer a lot of material support to women. So that looks like uh, monthly visits for diapers and baby clothes, formula, baby wipes, all sorts of necessities. Uh, Women are welcome to come in every 30 days to get those. We give out gift bags to moms who are pregnant and getting ready for the baby. And then we also offer a lot of classes and groups that women can take when they're pregnant and um, for the first couple of years of the baby's life. And we give out baby bucks for taking those classes and they get to buy things in our boutique um, for in, in kind of in recognition of the work that they've put into the classes. We, and I should mention too, we also have uh, post-abortion counseling. So all of those services are really meant to meet that woman where she is, uh, to share Christ with her, both through word and deed, um, and really just support her in, in what we hope is a life decision. Wow. That is, that's a lot of options. That's cool. <laughs> you guys are doing a lot there. I really appreciate the, like, just as you're describing, the, the holistic care approach, right? It's not just, there's not this one, I don't want to call them narrow-minded goal, but there's not this one little goal. It's like, no, we want to really truly care for somebody that's in a really difficult, really challenging circumstance. Hmm. And it, it really is about both the baby and the mom. We want to love them both really well. And if you focus just on one without the other, um, I think we're missing things and I don't think we're loving them as Jesus would love them. Without using any names, of course, because uh, I imagine just just the the non non the anonymous nature is very valuable. But would you be willing to share some stories about how some women have been impacted by CareNet? Yeah, that's the best part of being here every day is getting to hear these stories and having, you know, the stenographer come and and sit down in my desk and kind of plop down and say, this is why I work here. This is why, you know, I volunteer here, whatever the case may be. Um, So one story that comes to mind, there was a client that came in recently. Um, She found out she was pregnant. Um, She was married, um, but she had just started a job. She was just kind of getting on with the second act of her life after having little kids at home. And she just didn't know if she could have another kid. She thought it you know, she just wasn't sure what she was going to do, but she was definitely considering abortion. Um, She had the ultrasound. And as she was going through that ultrasound, she shared that she was a Christian. She didn't really believe in abortion. She didn't want to do that, but she just didn't know how she was going to do it. Um, Our stenographer really got to encourage her and just share that, that you can do this, that, you know, talk with your husband about it, talk with your family, um, you know, kind of broadened her mind a little bit and helped her to zoom out 
from that immediate like pregnancy test, oh my gosh, to how would it look to have another child in the family? How would it look to have some additional help while you're still going back to work? And and all just lots of different ways of of thinking about things. Um, we talked, they talked about um, how God can make a way. You know that if you're if you're seeking after God and and you're now having another baby, He's going to make a way for this to work out. And she was very receptive to that. She was you know, in tears almost by the end of the visit, just saying thank you because she was, I really didn't want to have an abortion. I just needed to figure out a way to think about this mm. uh, in a way that would be uh, possible for me to do mm. this. And so she goes home, we follow up with her. Um, she recently, you know, talked with her husband about it and contacted us back and just said it went really well. He's excited about it. We're going to make this work. Um, and she just thanked us again, like for helping her through that moment of crisis where really she could have made a different decision if she had been in a different place. And I think that's what I love about CareNet is um, it's a place for people to come that's safe, that is non-judgmental. There's not pressure here. There's just encouragement and support. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I think you just hit the nail on the head. Like that's what I've been thinking, even just since the beginning of the call, like, I think something that is so cool about what you guys are doing is um, bringing that like actual practical help for people, right? And it sounds like in the midst of that, you guys really have the opportunity then to share, you know, Jesus or encouragement or whatever it may be. Um, but you guys are also providing like expert level stuff, right? And so like, how do you create that space as well to feel like, you know, people are comfortable and you can share and encourage them. And it, it really is kind of a two prong approach. Like you said, there's, and I kind of think about that in our facility itself. If anyone's ever been down here, we have this beautiful first floor that has, you know, the more of the medical room, the ultrasound room, the emergency supplies, mm -hmm. the monthly visits, things that, that women are just in need of, like they come to us because they have a specific material or physical need. And we meet them right there and say, okay, we're going to give you that free ultrasound. We're going to talk through the options. We're going to answer your medical questions. And once you kind of get through that crisis, like this woman, for example, she's she's now decided she's going to carry the pregnancy. What we then want and what we, we pray to happen is that that client would then come up to our second floor, which um, offers all of the classes and support groups. And so we do have just kind of going back to a different story. This is a different client now, but you know, we have, we do have several moms who are struggling with postpartum depression. One in particular comes to mind. She comes to class every single day that it's offered. So we have different classes every day. So she's not repeating them, but she just comes and she could just stay one full day, but instead she chooses to come once every day to a different class because she needs a place to go. She needs a reason to get dressed in the morning, a place to take her baby. She's making friends. She's, she's connecting with the Lord and it's, really um, helping her grow spiritually, but also just helping her through kind of her, um, the postpartum depression that she's facing along with other medical interventions. But, but that second floor, the second floor here is really important too, because it's not necessarily the crisis moment, but it's that relationship building opportunity. I wonder, so I think one of the, the great challenges that, you know, I mean, especially couple of of guys like Nate and I like our perspective is so is so limited even with what we have right um but even people in different circumstances who haven't faced circumstances that the the clients that you have are facing it, could you maybe help our perspective like could you maybe explain what is what are the clients because there's a I'm sure there's a whole range of situations they're going through what might be some of those situations that they're facing and and um, yeah. Could you just help us understand? I think that's a great question because understanding is so important. Um, if we have understanding, I think that can replace judgment mm -hmm. and that's really vital to what we do because if a client feels like we're judging her and questioning why she would make a decision, um, she's not going to open up. We're not going to be able to have any sort of relationship with her. And we're not going to be able to impact her life. And so I love that idea of like, how do we understand where our clients are coming from um, when we don't maybe share that exact same experience that they're mm -hmm. facing? Um, so the first thing we do is really just listen 
and ask good questions um, and give them space to share. And what we find when we do that is, I mean, every, like you said, every client is unique, every story is unique, but there are some themes that women are facing that we see. And one of them is a lack of support um, from the father. So we definitely see that. Um, we see women who have, you know, multiple kids with multiple different guys and the guys have multiple kids with multiple different women. And so there's just not that family structure um, that maybe we grew up with and that the family is there for a reason. And when you don't have that family structure, it's hard. And women are facing these pregnancies essentially alone um, because the father is not involved and because her other support system, it's not that she doesn't have people that care and love her, but they're all taxed. They're all overtaxed. They all have their own concerns and issues. And so they can't necessarily pour into her as much as she needs. And that's where Karenette comes in because we do want to pour into her. Um, but yeah, just not having the support, um, financial issues, and that kind of goes to the support. But, mm -hmm. um, you know, we do have several clients at any given time who are living in their cars, um, waiting on, on waiting lists for shelters, on waiting lists for housing. Um, so that's, that's a challenge. And the other thing that we see a lot is um, just unhealthy relationships. So she might have the fathers involved, but the, it's an unhealthy relationships, meaning domestic violence um, and abuse. And so just a lot of external things that are going on that then when you get that pregnancy news, it's not just the baby because that woman would love that baby. She loves her other kids. She would be a good mom, but there's so much pressure externally that is bearing down on her um, that is making her feel like abortion is her only choice. And I've never met a woman that wanted to choose abortion and that was excited about that option. It's always, I have to do this because, and then fill in the blank. And so our job is to try to figure out what, what is the reason that she's feeling she has no choice mm -hmm. and how can we help tangibly and how can we encourage her emotionally and spiritually um, to see that she does have other options? The, there's just so much power in that. I mean, I, I almost struggle to find the, the right words, honestly, to be able to describe the the impact that that has where you're taking going into a situation where someone feels like they have no choice and create giving them and creating a place and a space where they can actually explore other options and they can feel understood i'm sure is a huge goal for you guys to have for them it is and in trying to weave in and have at the forefront honestly um the gospel message is is really where what we want to do. Sometimes um, that's challenging because there's so much going on in that room, especially that first visit where they're finding out they're pregnant and then we're doing an ultrasound and they're talking through options and they're learning about, you know, the impacts of if, if they choose abortion, how would that affect them? And, and there's so much that sometimes we're just like, Lord, you need to just give us an opportunity and open a door. Um, and sometimes he really does. And sometimes we just, we hold off and back off a little bit and invite her back in. And it's more about relationship building at that point. But yeah, there's a lot going on and um, we have kind of goals with the physical services, but also goals with um, sharing the Lord and, and wanting them to feel that they have hope beyond their situation. What do you feel like people are surprised to learn about Karenette? I think when we talk about the number of women that come through our door, that that's always a surprise to people. Um, so like we've had, you know, people say, oh, I want to give this kind of a donation, like a certain maybe book or um, a basket or something. And they're like, we want to give one to every one of your clients. And I'm like, well, we're going to have 1,400 different women come through our door this year. So I don't know that we can <laughs> cover everyone. Yeah. <laughs> So, um, so it's always well-meaning, but I always like, well, maybe we'll do it for this month. How about we do it for the month of yeah. November? We'll give this out or whatever it is. Um, so yeah, we see a lot of women, um, and some are just a, a te pregnancy test and it's negative and we might never see them again. Um, and then some come every week to class, you know, so it, it just depends on what their needs are, but yeah, we'll see over 1400 different women this year. 
And um, the other thing that people are may sometimes interested in learning um, is that we, about 45% of the women that come to us for pregnancy tests and ultrasounds are considering abortion and are undecided um, if they're gonna continue the pregnancy or not. And that's even held true um, post dobs you know, with all the changes in the laws and things. It, that doesn't, the law doesn't change hearts. You know, the Lord changes hearts. And so the law can be whatever the law is, but if women want to terminate a pregnancy, they will find a way. That's what we're seeing. I mean, that's not Rachel saying that, but that's just what we're seeing. Um, and so um, just to know that almost half the women coming through our doors are thinking, I can't do this. I don't want this baby. Um, and then on the flip side, about 75% of those women are leaving saying, I can do this and I'm going to continue this pregnancy. So those are um, sometimes, I don't know if it's surprising numbers, but we're, we're super excited about those numbers. Yeah. I mean, that's a, that's a very real tangible impact that you guys are making, which is amazing. Yeah. And I feel like, honestly, like, kind of like you alluded to John, like so much of this just is like a world that I'm not familiar with at all, you know? And like, I guess just, like, thank you, Rachel, for sharing. And just like, um, it's very eye opening. <laughs> and like, even just from the perspective of like, praying for you guys, what you were doing there, I know, um, you guys are providing all these resources, in addition to just however, God might open up opportunities for you to speak to people and encourage people. And um, I might be jumping forward a little bit here, but <laughs> I would love to just dig into that, like, how can people help part of it? Yeah. Um, so there's a lot of ways to help. Um, one, like you said, is to pray because it's really a spiritual battle that we face. And it's, it's hard being on the front line sometimes because our, our client advocates pour in hours and hours with one individual talking with them, praying with them, caring for them. And then some of them do choose to terminate their pregnancy and some, we lose track of because their phone numbers change and some, um, you know, are just difficult endings to their stories, whatever it might be. And that's hard when you've invested um, so much. And so just praying for the staff to um, have wisdom, to be refreshed, to approach each client with love, you know, all of those things, um, that prayer can be prayed every single day. Um, and we, we are thankful for those that are praying it. And so if, if you're interested in, that aspect and just learning about like what we do, then connecting with us in some way, like we have a prayer text list, we have a prayer, you know, email, we do newsletters and I don't overdo it. I would say in the communication realm, because I never like to receive, you know, 10 emails a month from someplace, but if you connect with us, give us that kind of contact info so that we can connect back with you, you'll get a, a really good um, toolkit in terms of like how to pray. So that's definitely one way to help. Um, I know the Ridge brings groups um, to CareNet periodically. And so that's another way. Um, and that really is helpful. They come in clean, they help get the mailings out, they help mm -hmm. sort baby clothes, all of that. Um, and so those opportunities arise periodically. So just keep your eyes open for that um, or reach out to um, the leadership at the Ridge and, and they can connect you with our contact person um, at the Ridge to so that she knows when she comes to serve with the group that you're interested in serving. Um, you can donate material things. And sometimes we'll get um, like small groups at the Ridge or other churches that will reach out separately from maybe a church drive or a churchwide effort and just say, hey, we have a group of you know 10 or 20. We want to do a donation drive, collect things for you for Christmas or for whatever reason. Um, what are your greatest needs right now? And so then we can tell them what our top needs are. And then we we get a nice collection from that small group. And that's wonderful. Um, right now, actually, our biggest need is diapers. Um, for a while, it wasn't diapers because we had so many people give us diapers. And then all of a sudden now I'm like, oh my gosh, I need to ask for diapers. So <laughs> it just, um, yeah, it just fluctuates, but just those things. Um, we also have volunteers that come every week and help um, with childcare during the classes or help, um, you know, have kind of tasks assigned to them. They might come and um, do data entry or vacuum every week for us, or, you know, just different things that we just don't have enough staff to accomplish each week. Um, so there's lots of ways like that as well to help. 
Uh, I wonder if we could maybe jump back real quick. Uh, mm-hmm. I'm curious. So, I mean, it, and it touched on part of this where he was saying, like, you know, this is so eye opening for him. I'm sure over your time at Caronet, like you've had some of those moments where there's been eye opening things or or things that you've grown or things you've learned, perspective shift. Could you share some of that with us? One thing I've, I know, but working here, I've learned even more deeply is that God gives us free will and autonomy to exercise it. Um, but we're not immune from the consequences of our choices. And we try and share that with women as they're making pregnancy decisions. In other words, um, like they have the choice whether to continue their pregnancy or not. And regardless of what they choose, there's going to be consequences. Um, We had a teenager recently, um, just a few weeks ago, um, she was in here, she was being pressured to um, have an abortion. She didn't want to. um, And from what she told us, she could have stood up to her parents and said, no, I don't want to go through with this abortion. I want to continue this pregnancy. And she told us that she thought they would support her, you know, that while they were pushing one agenda, if she kind of pushed back that she thought they would be there and support her. But ultimately she just didn't, I mean, she's a teenager. She didn't have that, the will, I guess, or that's enough of the understanding of how to stand up to her parents to do it. And so she went through with the abortion and it's been just tragic. Some of the um, conversations that we've had with her, she's struggling so mightily with that decision. Um, You know, she's, she's struggling with her mental health now. She's struggling physically, emotionally, and, and she's blaming herself, you know, because she didn't stand up um, like she wanted to, like she thought she should have, I mean, just second guessing. So anyway, just that the consequences of her decision are really haunting her right now. We're trying to support her the best we can. We do offer post-abortion counseling. We're, you know, trying to work with her on that, but she is a teenager. It's just, it's a a hard dynamic. Um, Mm. And so that's really been something that I've learned is just how decisions just stay with you. Um, And then on the flip side, how the Lord can free you from regret and free you from pain and, um, just bad decisions in your past. It's not that you don't have the consequences of it, but that God will, he forgives us and he redeems us and all of the things that you hear in church and that, you know, in your mind, we just see it. We see God restoring women who feel terrible about decisions they've made, but yet um, don't know how to move forward. And we can give them the tools and help them with that. And that's super powerful. And it just, I don't know, just restores my faith and it encourages my faith, I think, in the Lord. Mm-hmm. Yeah. How how has that impacted your faith? I gosh, I just feel like I just see God working so much every day that sometimes it just becomes part of it. And I'm like, oh my gosh, I have to stop and just praise God for what he just did. Like somebody will come in and be like, oh, this person just, you know, made this decision or just accepted Christ or and it's almost like part of my day now. And I'm like, oh my gosh. We have to stop and recognize and thank the Lord for all of these things. Um, so I think I, I don't know, it's just, it has expanded my faith um, and it's challenged my faith um, because some of the difficult things. So it's, it's been a stretching experience for me, but I was just thinking about what you guys were talking about as, as guys, sometimes it's hard to understand or think about how can I um, understand what even this ministry is about, or how can I support, how can I make an impact? And so one thing um, that's been on my heart lately is how do churches connect with women who are facing an unplanned pregnancy? And how do men connect with women in this situation? Because it's, it seems more like a woman's ministry, uh, because we're ministering to women, for the most part. And one way that I think that men and churches can have a direct impact is to make it known that they are a safe place for a woman if she finds herself in an unexpected pregnancy. Because that doesn't just happen in the city of Milwaukee. It happens in Greenfield. It happens in Oak Creek. It happens in all the suburbs, everywhere throughout time, from biblical times forward. This is not a new phenomenon. And so having somebody stand up in front of the church and say, look, if you find yourself pregnant, come to us. Or if you are in a a friend group or a small group, we want to make it known um, to like whoever may need it, that we are a safe place to come. Um, 
it, the statistics show that about 40% of women who had an abortion were in church the month before their abortion. And so to think about how powerful that could be to know that you're in a church that will not judge you and shame you, but in a church that will support you and love you, um, despite maybe a bad decision, um, that I think is really powerful. And I think that guys have a role in that um, because not all guys are maybe stepping up and encouraging, but if you can do that, I think that could be very helpful and powerful to that woman who's, who's finding herself pregnant. What a great reminder. I mean, that's the, the creating a safe place. That's a, I'm seeing past a, a decision and seeing holistically what a person needs because they, what they don't need is to be told if they, it, or, you know, our job is not to judge somebody's previous actions. Our job is to support and care and love somebody. And pregnancy is such a unique, um, a unique thing because it's so visible it's like you made a decision, you know, however many months ago, and now you're pregnant and everybody sees it. But how much of our sin life is actually hidden? People don't know when I am thinking a bad thought. People don't know when I am lusting after somebody or when I'm jealous of somebody or when I'm, you know, I don't know. There are all of the things that kind of happen within my mind that Jesus tells me is just as bad as actually doing something. Mm -hmm. Um it's not, you can't see it. And yet there's, there's no difference in level of sin and level of mistakes. And yet, and that's why I just feel like women get um, the short end of the stick sometimes because they get judged for this, this decision that they made whenever, you know, months ago. And yet so much of, of our sin goes unjudged um, by other people because they just don't see it. Man, I, I mean, I, feel challenged there like that's a that's like a that's a culture thing right like that's a mindset shift for the church like the church people and so like just that idea of being a safe place like it being a cultural thing i think even extends to like my social circles or my circles that i'm in at church and examining those right it's an individual thing but it's also a man, is this, is this a place that we're really encouraging those people and those people feel open to be here and sharing their stories? And um, yeah, it, it makes me examine my own heart, but then also like even just how I'm interacting and stuff when I'm in social environments and am I, am I portraying that openness? Am I a safe place, you know? And it one of the questions that was asked earlier was just how has my faith changed and how have I been changed by working here? And I think that's one of the things is I, I would think before being here, I had more of a tendency to judge and look at other people's decisions. I would never do that. I would never make that decision. You're just being judgmental. And that spirit is still probably inside of me because I'm human, but I have much more compassion now having talked with so many women and seen the struggles and seen the heartache and knowing that decisions are not being made lightly, um, but they're being made um, mm -hmm. after a lot of thought and, and that they're in difficult circumstances. And anyway, I just feel like I have a lot more compassion for people and understanding for their decisions. Well, and like it, I feel like, you know, sometimes even just the complacency of it can be not being open, right, can be not being a safe space. And so like, that's part of the challenge I feel for myself too, is like, um, especially when somebody has something that's really weighing heavy, like they actually need people to be proactively open and encouraging. And so like the challenge isn't just, you know, hey, don't be a jerk, <laughs> like don't be judging, don't be closed off, but hey, are we actually like proactively encouraging? Are we proactively a safe place? And what does it look like to practice that? Yeah, and I think that goes into the importance of like what we communicate and what we say, because there may be a side conversation that you have with somebody that communicates mm -hmm. something that says you're not a safe place, you know? Mm -hmm. And so making sure that even in moments where you think that doesn't matter, like you need to constantly, I think, I'll speak to myself. I need to constantly be communicating that I'm a safe person to talk to about those mm -hmm. types of things. And my hope is that people would do that as well. So over the last year or so, 
this specific topic has become like very, like, very heightened, very thrown to the forefront. Um, and there's a lot of just animosity around it. It, what, I don't know, what would you say to both sides of that, that discussion? Yeah. So since the Dobbs decision, which overruled Roe v. Wade, um, there has been a lot of, uh, a lot, like you said, a lot of animosity over this issue, a lot of political arguing over the issue. Um, it's a challenging time for a ministry like this because we are not a political organization and yet the life issue has become so politicized. So I always like to step back and think, how would Jesus handle this situation? And the approach that we take at CareNet and that I take personally in terms of uh, the life issue is to remove it from politics and to say that Jesus would love that mom 100%. And Jesus would love that baby that she is carrying 100%. It's not, you know, 50% her, 50% the baby and, and politics pits them against each other. And there's a winner and a loser. Either the mom gets to choose and the baby doesn't get to live, or you support the baby and the mom has to carry this pregnancy she doesn't want. And, and they're pitting them against each other. And that's not how I think and believe that Jesus would handle it. He would just say, I love the mom. I love the baby. And we are going to find a way to support them both. And that looks like caring for that mom and bringing her through that pregnancy in a safe and healthy way and caring for that baby and making sure that baby gets a chance to live. And so that's messy. It is not a simple um, solution that you can you know, include on a 20 second political ad, um, but that is how Jesus operates. When, when all the Pharisees come and ask him questions, they're trying to trick him. Um, he finds a way around it and he, he finds a way to show love in whatever circumstance it is, whether it's healing on the Sabbath or paying taxes to Caesar or, you know, trying to trip him up. And that's what I feel like it is right now is, is people trying to trip each other up instead of really looking for ways to care about both the mom and the baby. Thanks for sharing on that. I know that's a, it's a difficult topic to talk about and you live in the midst of it all the time. So thanks for being able to, Thanks for being willing to share with us and, and talk about this stuff. Um, I just have one last question for you, and it's uh, hopefully more more uplifting than the kind of the dredges of the conversation. But um, so we've, the, as a church, we've done Live Big over the last several years, uh, and I know that you guys have been a big partner in that and and what we and what we do. And I'm just curious if you could share some of the impact that Live Big has made in your organization. Live Big has been such an incredible blessing, um, as has the partnership overall with the Ridge. So what an awesome church, what an awesome leadership you have. Um, but over the years, Live Big has impacted a lot of different aspects of our ministry. I think the first year that we were involved, you helped us expand our ultrasound program before we were only offering it um, three or four days a week, offering ultrasounds. But with the help of Live Big, we were able to add an extra day with our sonographer. So now we have coverage five days a week with ultrasounds, which is really, really important. Um, and so that was awesome. And then the next year with Live Big, you helped us expand our offerings in our um, in our classes, our Learn to Earn program, where you take the classes and you get the baby bucks and you get to buy things with them. And really that's where um, the gospel is shared the most. And so that was really neat. So we've um, gotten to increase our staff hours with that. We've increased the programming. We've added childcare. We've, you know, just so much um, growth has come to that program because of Live Big. And then this year with Live Big, um, you're one of the projects that you are helping us fund is expansion physically into the space next door to our center. And we're going to be adding a second ultrasound room, more childcare space and space for donation processing. Um, so it's just kind of expanding our physical footprint to allow us to continue to grow the ministries that are happening here. And that is, wouldn't be possible without the Live Big um, donations and, and program that you have going. 
That's amazing. I'm so excited. I'm so excited that it's been able to make an impact and, and thank you to all the people who've given and to, to live big and uh, the impact that you've had. And uh, we ask you to just continue to do so and continue to make an impact on organizations like Kiernet. Rachel, thank you so much for sharing with us and sharing your heart and sharing uh, what Kiernet does for so many women. So thank you. Well, thanks for having me. This has been really fun. Well, that was our conversation with Rachel from Kiernet and just a, honestly, just a really powerful conversation and just so humbled mm-hmm. by the things that she's doing and and the stuff that she's working through. And yet yeah. her faith is still growing because of it. And it's really powerful. And mm-hmm. Nate, I'm curious your, your thoughts as you're hearing that. Yeah. I think like just after that conversation, I'm really just hoping and praying that like Rachel and their whole team just feels really encouraged, you know? And, um, like what they're doing there is just real, real awesome. Um, and I, I think, you know, one thing we see from all our partners is, are, are these unique perspectives they have because of the kind of work that they do. And, um, yeah, I just felt particularly challenged by that idea of, uh, what does it mean to be a safe space? What does it mean to be encouraging and like try to turn off that, like, that thing we don't think about a lot, but we might kind of like naturally have that sort of judgmental or like rough exterior as opposed to really being, as Rachel said, just like as open as Christ would be, you know, like proactively open. So I felt challenged by that and I hope that they just feel so encouraged with all the stuff they're doing over there. Yeah. It's like, I, what's my role? My role is to love people well, mm-hmm. you know, and it's, I think it's really challenging to do that if we don't create a space and a safe place to be able to support, you know, yeah. regardless of, of where you're at. Mm-hmm. Um, and of course, if this is, if this is a topic that's you're hearing this and this is something that's like touching your heart, if it's something that's like, oh, I really want to make an impact and a difference, connect with, connect with Karenet and um, whether that's through prayer, whether that's through something more tangible. Um, and we obviously we're in live big. And so, we everything we collect donation wise during live big we give 100 percent away and so know that part of your you know part of your donation is going directly towards internet and helping them facilitate some of this incredible stuff hey, and if you are listening and uh, you actually feel like you are someone that could utilize some of Karenet's resources we're going to link them in the show notes as well so that you can get connected with them Thanks for listening to the Ridge Community Church Podcast. If you found today's episode hopeful and helpful, please follow or subscribe and even share it with a friend if you feel like this conversation would be valuable for them to hear. And make sure you follow and subscribe as well so that you don't miss any hopeful and helpful conversations.